Archbishop Desmond Tutu has died at 90 years old. The Nobel Peace Prize winner played a major role in ending apartheid in South Africa. He was a fierce fighter for human rights and wasn't afraid to speak out against corrupt governments. But he didn't just use harsh words or and strong actions. Rather, he fought for freedom with a smile on his face and laughter that was infectious to those around him. CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata has more. <laughs> the tiny clergyman with a twinkle in his eye, a massive laugh and a dance in his step. Born in the township of Clarksdorp, South Africa, Desmond Tutu went on to become a Nobel Peace Prize winner, a global campaigner for human rights and a man who always spoke truth to power, whether it was a white racist regime or a corrupt African dictatorship. As South Africa's first black archbishop, he unhesitatingly used his office to bravely challenge the brutal racism of the country's apartheid rulers. The primary violence, and white people don't want to hear this, the primary terrorism in this country comes from the government. And until that system goes, there is no hope at all of any stability in this land. But equally, he could turn that righteous fury onto his own supporters. In 1985, Tutu fearlessly broke up an angry South African mob and prevented them from burning a man to death on suspicion of being an apartheid spy. When the dark days of racial hatred finally ended and Tutu's longtime friend and former South African president Nelson Mandela was released from 27 years behind bars, the irrepressible arch, as he is affectionately known, could not hold back his joy. Freedom is coming! Freedom is coming! And it was Mandela who appointed his friend Tutu to lead South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, a body tasked with uncovering the truth about the apartheid government's brutality. At times, it moved Tutu to tears. Here, he breaks down on hearing yet another victim's harrowing story. But there was a measured consistency in his approach, like the time he begged Mandela's former wife, Winnie Madikizela Mandela, to apologize for abducting a young boy in 1988 because she believed he was an apartheid spy. The 14-year-old child's battered body was found many weeks later. I beg you, please. You are a great person. And you don't know how your greatness would be enhanced if you were to say sorry. Things went wrong. Forgive me. I beg you. The business of dismantling apartheid was not all doom and gloom. Tutu had a self-deprecating sense of humor. One, one lady said to me, hey, Bishop, if they do this when you come here, can you imagine what is going to happen when Nelson comes? Quick to crack a joke or break out into song and dance. The world is a little darker without him. He leaves behind a foundation committed to human rights. But his real legacy is the wonderful tale of how a diminutive pastor with a big laugh became a global conscience for the world. Deborah Patter, CBS News, Johannesburg, South Africa. For more on this, I want to bring in CBS News foreign correspondent Holly Williams. She's joining me now from London. Holly, thank you so much for being here. What's been the reaction out of South Africa from citizens and leaders? Well, Deborah, we've heard first of all from South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, who called Archbishop Tutu a patriot without equal and described him as a man of extraordinary intellect, integrity and invincibility against the forces of apartheid. Uh, the Nelson Mandela Foundation called him an extraordinary human being, a thinker, a leader, a shepherd. Uh, mourners have gathered today outside St George's Cathedral in Cape Town. Um, the South African 
cricket team wore black armbands in their in their match today uh, against India. Uh, millions of South Africans are mourning a man who, who simply transformed their lives. He was a towering figure, as you heard just then in Deborah Patter's report against apartheid. He helped galvanise uh, opposition to it, not just at home in South Africa, but around the world. Um, a giant has fallen. Um, and that's why we're also seeing tributes pouring in from around the world. Former President Barack Obama called him a mentor, friend and moral compass. The Pope sent his condolences. The Queen here in the UK said she was deeply saddened by the passing of a man who tire tirelessly championed human rights. And the Dalai Lama, also a Nobel uh, Peace Prize winner, described their enduring friendship and said the best tribute we can pay him is to see how we too can be of help to others. Mm, it's a beautiful way of putting it for sure. You know, he obviously was a major human rights figure, not just in South Africa, but around the world. Um, you know, uh, you were talking about uh, former President Barack Obama. He awarded him a Presidential Medal of Freedom. What made him so widely known and just so beloved outside of his country? Well, you know, this is a little personal, but, but I remember being a, a child growing up half a world away from South Africa, um, but watching on the television, watching the news, watching what was happening there in the dying days of apartheid um, and, and watching Archbishop, Archbishop Tutu, listening to him um, and just feeling inspired uh, and moved by his courage, um, his willingness to speak the truth, um, to call what he thought was evil, evil, um, but also the fact that he was so full of exuberance and, and joy. And he had the same impact on millions and millions of people all around the world who glimpsed hope uh, in his peaceful struggle against tyranny. Um, but, you know, Archbishop Tutu called out inequality and prejudice and oppression wherever uh, he felt that it existed. So after Nelson Mandela's death, he criticised the new government of South Africa. He criticised Israel for its treatment of the Palestinians. And he was an outspoken advocate for women's rights and for gay rights. And to give you a flavour of just how direct and witty he could be uh, when he, he felt that he knew what was right and he wanted to say what was right. Back in 2013, he said, quote, I would not worship a God who is homophobic. Uh, he went on to say, I would refuse to go to a homophobic heaven. I would say, sorry, I would rather go to the other place. <laughs> he had a way with words for sure and obviously very inspiring to so many people. I love hearing about how you know, he touched you as well. You know, he headed a commission, obviously, Archbishop Tutu, that investigated human rights violations. Uh, but why was that? Why was that work just so incredibly important to him? Well, it was important to him, but it was also very important to South Africans. Um, you know, so often uh, tyranny begets tyranny. That is, when, when one oppressive regime is toppled by another group of people, they themselves end up being oppressors uh, or they seek violent revenge. Um, and that was clearly part of Nelson Mandela's thinking in setting up the Truth and Reconciliation Commission after apartheid ended and Mandela became president. And Archbishop Tutu shared that vision. He coined the phrase rainbow nation for South Africa. That really embodied um, his vision uh, for what South Africa could be. And he chaired the Truth and Reconciliation Commission where thousands of people came forward and talked about what they had suffered under apartheid, the loss of their loved ones, the murders of their loved ones, um, appalling violence, gross violations of human rights. And they also heard from many people um, who perpetrated those abuses, who came forward and admitted that, expressed remorse, um, and in, in some cases were given amnesty. Um, Look, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission not, was not without controversy. Some people said that it didn't deliver real justice. But if you watch that video that you saw a bit of um, just then during Deborah Patter's report um, of Archbishop Tutu breaking down in tears, you know, his head on the table, hearing one of those witnesses, you can't help but be moved and you can't help but understand the power of simply listening uh, and bearing witness. Absolutely. Couldn't be put any better. Thank you so much, Holly Williams. We appreciate it.